To hear him speak, you cannot but be convinced of the passion and zeal of Honorable Dennis Idahosa, who has been the Ovia Federal Constituency Representative and who is currently seeking a re-election. That he's fired up for his constituency, that is easily seen as when he says God is using him to take care of the needs of his people and he has examples to give. A man relocated from the University of Benin to now go into Maritime University or Karenkoko or another constituent, he got a federal road safety job. There was a man, uh, marvelous, um, I think working in the University of Benin then, and uh, there was an opening in, uh, in the Maritime University uh, in Delta State, and they needed a, a lecturer, and I had the opportunity so I was able to nominate him and also follow it up. Today is a senior lecturer in, uh, in the Maritime University of Korikoko Delta State. And there's another young man that, uh, that I also gave a, um, a road safety job. Uh, he just completed his uh, assignment and I think uh, was posted to, I think, Kogi. So he's currently serving there. The list goes on. Um, I'm a very, uh, like I said, a quiet achiever. I don't make noise based on what I've done. His passion and commitment did not just start now. It was even as he was a commissioner under Governor Adam Sushomole. As at then, he would donate as much as 100% of his salary to widows, a practice he still maintains till today. My personal office, out of the salary that I get, even when I was a commissioner, under and Absali Oshomole, all my salary, 100%, was given to widow. I don't take one error because I believe God has blessed me. Let me also be a blessing to my generation. So I was giving all the money to the widow. And that is the same thing I decided to, to replicate in this current uh, uh, administration. As a House of Rep member, most of my salary, even more, I'm not talking about overhead, 100% is given to Ovia youth. And women that are on, on my payroll. I have about uh, 72 essays in my directly under my payroll that I pay something which is nothing less than the minimum requirement, which is 30,000 per month. You know, so that is what I pay for 72 people quietly. Just one or two examples of Honorable Dennis Sidausa's intervention in the lives of his constituents. He has done more trying to fix Ovia constituents in the public service, ministries, and MDA. Beyond employment, he has been concerned about what he describes as infrastructural deficit in Ovia, and so he is working hard to fill the gaps. And this he has been doing in the education sector, like in Ewanabo, where students attend school in a neighboring state, in a school where pupils were learning without benches, like building up primary and secondary schools, in the Uluku area, in Ezua, Iowa community, Adolo Ward, of the Northeast local government area, a Lavore secondary school, Lucien, fitted with a toilet, a block of six classrooms, and a headmaster's office, Agbado community, Siloko Ward, provision of chairs, desks, and books at Ewaka Primary School, Obagie community, block of classrooms at Igweyase community, Ora Ward, of the Southwest, Block of classrooms at Ubo Primary School in Nikoloa of the Southwest. A block of six classrooms at Okada Primary School 2, Oba Eware, the second farm settlement, Olaye Camp, Okada West Ward. A block of six classrooms at Naifo Secondary School, Naifo. Because of the uh, infrastructural deficit we had in Ovia, I decided to, to work so hard to fill the gaps. Um, I had a plan proud to my elections. I haven't gone around. I was born and raised uh, in Ovia. I wasn't born outside to come and represent them, but I was born and raised there. So I knew exactly what we were missing. First, apart from the uh, schools that uh, our, our previous governor, Adam Salio Shomole, built in Ovia, there was no presence of the current uh, government. So there was a lot of uh, deficits. He said he's a thorough homeboy, 
having done his primary school at Utoka and secondary education at Igwo Bazua, and so he knows the needs of his people. He has always been and lived with them. This he ascertains through weekly town hall meetings, as he is away from Abuja at the weekends. It is to come home, and it is his style for getting their needs assessment through town hall meetings. Basically, lived almost all my life in in Ovia Federal Constituency, so. Um, not knowing that God was uh, actually preparing me for leadership. So you cannot lead your people when you don't know them. And uh, to the glory of God, even before I became a, a House of Rep member, I've been close to them. Virtually almost all the young men and women that you see today that are in various offices, they, are, they were my classmates. So we know ourselves. And uh, I've been meeting with my people on weekly basis, every weekend, um, I usually don't do my weekends in Abuja. I will be in Ovia, you know, interacting with them. Most of my projects are people-oriented projects. It came from my people. I can't impose projects on them. I will interact with them. What are your needs in various communities and wards and local government? They will outline it. One is outline, I put it down, I go to Abuja and effect it. So none of the projects have been wasted. In Ovia Federal Constituency. It's not just attracting project, it's to make sure that it's the project that the people actually need. And that is what we've been doing in Ovia Federal Constituency. And from this needs assessment, he has been focusing on health, education, empowerment, and on security. On security, he has an interesting story to tell. In two words, that's uh, Okoku and Uhere Ward. Uh, they drove our people out of farm and even invaded some of their communities. So we said it was, uh, it was an error. We're expecting the, uh, the government of the day to intervene. I realized that you know, about a, a month passed and nothing has happened. And people were in severe pain. So I had to go and uh, meet our people. We assembled and I promised them that we will ensure that uh, their interests um, will be protected. And also the primary responsibility of a government is to the, the protection of life and property and the welfare of his uh, citizens. So I, I went there, I met with them, I supported them privately, and uh, today, both words, they've gone back to their community and uh, we will ensure, by the grace of God Almighty, that elders cannot take our land. And uh, a government under my watch, I will never allow that, will make sure that uh, if they want peace, we'll give it to them, but if they don't want peace, they cannot take over our land. Another interesting story we hear from Honorable Dennis Edawosa, the Ovia Federal Constituency Representative, is his project in skill acquisition centers at Igwobazua and Udo, supplied with equipment for solar panel system repair, ICT repair, vulcanizing, hairdressing, tailoring, soap making, welding, furniture, and shoe making equipments. In terms of uh, skill acquisition, this time around, I decided to build skill acquisition centers in two uh, areas, uh, one at Udo, there's other one at Igobazwa. But the minister insisted that he must come and um, commission it. So it's fully completed and furnished. We are waiting for the uh, commissioning so that we can swing into action. And I think, uh, by the grace of God, it's, uh, it's uh, happening anytime soon. Interesting stories from Honorable Dennis Idahosa. He hopes to complete as many as 120 projects in his first term in the House. The list of what has been done is so long it will take hours to recount. But just a sneak preview of many of Honorable Idahosa's achievements. He's built to be the best, number one and nothing less. Lead me to my destiny, I have waited patiently. I have vision, though I believe, I know I can count on me. Stand up for the champions, for the champions Stand up, stand up, stand up For the champions, for the champions Stand up for the champions, for the champions Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up For the champions 
aside physical infrastructures, he occasionally, in the spirit of the season, brings community youths together to engage in sporting activities. Among his many outstanding projects are a 12,000 liters capacity industrial solar borehole in Ekiadolo, a 20,000 liters motorized solar powered borehole in Igubazua, eastward of the South local government area, a 500 kVA transformer at Uyigwe Street, Igubazua. Then there is a multipurpose town hall in Igubazua near completion and ready for use. And yet another at Usain in Ovia Southwest local government. Off Mwegbe street light in Igubazua. 37.4 kilometers Udo Inukorowa electrification project. Solar street light projects at Iyase Palace Road, Udo Ward. Empowerment schemes to reduce unemployment in form of motorcycle distribution to youths and women through 23 wards and car gifts to assist in uplifting those who are drivers of cabs. 5,000 birds and 650 bags of feeds and vaccine to assist those in the poultry business. Through a motion, the failed Ubogui Bridge along the Benin or a Lagos Highway was fixed. Intervention by the federal government in a Goli erosion at the University of Benin. A cassava processing plant at Igubazwa or via Southwest local government area. Primary healthcare centers at Adeniyi community near Lakaloko was a ward of your southwest and another at Okung community in our via northeast local government area. A bill to establish a national orthopedic hospital at Okung of via northeast local government area. An Aden bridge undergoing construction in Aden community of via southwest local government area. But what about the many in other wards who may complain of neglect? His response is swift, but that of concern. We cannot give to everybody at the same time, but surely the dividends of democracy will definitely get to them. Um, if I've not been able to give you something directly, and I've been able to attract development to your community, uh, by extension, you've been, uh, you've been taken care of. I have three bridges. Usually, legislators, they don't build bridges. I've completed two bridges now, but the third one will soon start. Uh, that is the, the, uh, the link between Edo State and Ondo, that's Obwese and Okinuse, is in the budget. And uh, by the grace of God, they told us by uh, October, they will start the construction of the bridge. The uh, first one I did was the Aden Bridge at Ubogui Ward. That one is 90% completed now. Not just the bridge, even the connecting road, you know, um, to the bridge is also being uh, constructed. So that bridge, if you go there and... Uh, and inspect the bridge, you realize that this should be either, you know, a minister's or president or state governors uh, that can actually uh, build such bridges. But I decided to do it for my people because the, the need, there was a need for it, and I, I stood my ground. It's not just sending someone to Abuja to represent. It's someone that has the capability to do what is needed for your people. So I was able to do that bridge. And apart from that, there's another bridge at uh, um, um, the Soko Bridge. Uh, it's on the Bini Lagos Expressway. Yeah, when I when I got there, I saw the you know the the traffic. You know, it was almost a kilometer uh, length. I realized that uh, we needed the federal government attention immediately, and uh, I moved the motion to that effect. And uh, to the glory of God, I did not just move a motion and let it be. I went to meet the minister insisting that this bridge must be done ASAP. And he said, Dennis, no problem. You are not here to come and fight for yourself. You are here to fight for your people. I will get it done. And uh, to the glory of God, the bridge is fully completed. With all these numerous people-centered projects, what are his chances for a re-election come 2023? He can proudly say he makes the electorate the center of his representation. And he concludes with a favorite quote from a friend. I've done so well in the area of education, health, uh, even up to uh, town halls, ski acquisition center, uh, electrification, empowerment, you know, even in security. I've been able to establish that. You know, I keep telling people, one of my friends that I love so much, uh, he used to say something uh, during the previous election. He would say, I, I, I end it 
I deserve it is not negotiable. So I'm going to use that again. I've worked for the good people of Ovia Federal Constituency. I believe I earn it. I deserve it. And it's not negotiable. It is no surprising then that the Edo Broadcasting House in 2021 honored him with its first Edo Icon Award as the most outstanding lawmaker on empowerment. Thank you.